The U.S. Space Force has recently launched a groundbreaking project that merges the power of fast chemical rockets with the efficiency of nuclear electric propulsion. This ambitious endeavor, backed by a $35 million investment, aims to redefine the future of space travel, allowing spacecraft to maneuver with unmatched speed and flexibility. But what makes this hybrid propulsion system so unique, and how will it work? In this video, we will explore the science behind this revolutionary propulsion system, why it's so important for the future of space travel, and we will understand how it differs from other systems. So, without further ado, let's get started. The fusion of chemical rockets with nuclear electric propulsion could revolutionize space travel, offering a unique blend of speed and efficiency. Traditional chemical rockets, which have powered space missions since the dawn of the space age, are known for their ability to produce immense thrust. This thrust allows spacecraft to overcome Earth's gravity and perform rapid maneuvers, making them ideal for launches and quick orbital adjustments. However, this power comes with a trade-off. They burn through fuel quickly, limiting their effective range for long-term missions. In contrast, electric propulsion systems, such as ion thrusters, use electric energy to accelerate charged particles like xenon ions to produce thrust. These systems are highly fuel efficient, using much less propellant than chemical rockets. For example, the Hall Effect thruster, which has been used on missions like the Dawn spacecraft, provides steady and efficient thrust, making it suitable for extended deep space missions. However, electric propulsion systems typically generate much lower thrust, requiring longer periods to achieve the same speed that a chemical rocket could reach quickly. The innovation here lies in combining these technologies, leveraging a nuclear microreactor to power electric propulsion. Unlike solar panels, which lose efficiency as distance from the sun increases, a nuclear microreactor offers a consistent power source. This small yet powerful reactor uses nuclear fission to produce heat, which is then converted into electricity. The continuous energy flow enables the electric thrusters to operate at higher power levels, achieving greater speeds over long distances. It allows the spacecraft to shift between high thrust and fuel efficient modes. During critical moments, like avoiding space debris or adjusting its trajectory in tight windows, the spacecraft can rely on chemical rockets for rapid acceleration. Then, during long distance cruises, the nuclear powered electric propulsion takes over, maintaining high speeds without draining fuel reserves. At the heart of this project is the nuclear microreactor. Unlike the large nuclear reactors used for power generation on Earth, a microreactor must be compact and robust enough to withstand the rigors of space. It operates by splitting atomic nuclei, a process that releases a vast amount of heat. The key is converting this heat into electricity efficiently enough to power the spacecraft systems and electric thrusters. One of the main challenges is thermal management. In space, there is no air to dissipate heat, so excess thermal energy needs to be radiated away to prevent the system from overheating. This is where the work of Cornell University becomes vital. Their lightweight radiators are designed to maximize heat dissipation while minimizing mass, which is an essential consideration when every gram counts in space travel. Efficiently managing this heat allows the reactor to maintain a stable operating temperature ensuring consistent power generation for the electric thrusters. The H9 Hall thruster, a centerpiece of this propulsion system, pushes the boundaries of power for electric engines. It accelerates ions using a magnetic field, creating a jet of charged particles that propels the spacecraft forward. With power levels much higher than traditional ion engines, it can provide a significant boost to spacecraft velocity when paired with a nuclear power source. However, this requires robust power conversion systems. The University of Wisconsin's power processing module plays a crucial role in converting the reactor's output into usable electricity for the thruster. Additionally, researchers are exploring dual-purpose fuels, 
which are materials that can serve both as a propellant for chemical rockets and be ionized for electric propulsion. This would simplify the refueling process, as spacecraft would no longer need to carry separate fuel types for each propulsion mode. Using a single fuel source reduces the complexity of onboard fuel management and increases the spacecraft's flexibility in long-duration missions. Another critical challenge is ensuring the safety and containment of nuclear materials. The microreactor must be shielded to protect sensitive spacecraft electronics and any human passengers from radiation. This requires advanced materials that can endure both the intense heat and radiation produced during nuclear reactions. The engineering involved in these designs ensures that the spacecraft can operate safely even in the vacuum of space, where traditional cooling and shielding methods are ineffective. The hybrid system combining chemical rockets and nuclear electric propulsion stands out, but how does it compare to other propulsion technologies being developed today? One notable competitor is nuclear thermal propulsion, NTP, a technology that uses a nuclear reactor to heat a propellant like hydrogen. The heated gas expands rapidly, creating thrust. NTP systems can achieve much higher thrust levels than electric propulsion, making them suitable for missions requiring rapid acceleration, like crewed Mars missions. However, NTP still faces challenges with fuel efficiency during extended travel, where the hybrid system's electric propulsion has an edge. Another promising approach is the concept of direct fusion drives, DFD. Unlike fission-based reactors, fusion drives would generate energy by fusing atomic nuclei, a process similar to what powers the sun. Fusion propulsion could theoretically produce even greater power and thrust, propelling spacecraft at speeds far beyond current capabilities. However, fusion technology remains largely experimental, with significant technical hurdles in maintaining the stable plasma conditions required for fusion reactions. Ion thrusters, such as those used on the Dawn mission to the asteroid belt, are another existing technology. They use electric fields to accelerate ions, providing a gentle but continuous push. These thrusters are highly efficient, consuming minimal propellant, but they require a lot of power to operate effectively. In this context, the nuclear microreactor offers a way to power such thrusters beyond what solar panels could achieve making electric propulsion viable for missions that extend far beyond the inner solar system. Solar sails are also an alternative, utilizing the pressure exerted by photons from the sun to propel a spacecraft. Solar sails, such as those demonstrated by the Planetary Society's LightSail 2, offer a near-infinite source of energy and are ideal for long-duration, low-thrust missions. However, they lack the rapid acceleration capability needed for missions requiring quick adjustments or evasive maneuvers. The hybrid system stands out because it's versatile as we explained. It could be crucial for deep space exploration, military applications, and even commercial ventures, as it enables a single spacecraft to perform a wider range of tasks than would be possible with just one propulsion system. In a strategic sense, this technology could also shift the balance in the space race. With countries like China investing in advanced space technologies, the U.S. aims to maintain its edge by innovating faster and more adaptive propulsion methods. The ability to maneuver without regret means that American spacecraft could more effectively respond to threats or opportunities in space, maintaining both exploration and defense capabilities. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on the latest space innovations.